<laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Tom and welcome back to Let's Talk with Tom where I talk to you casually about a show that I want to talk about. Today I want to talk about Hilda. Hilda is a new show on Netflix that just dropped its first season just a couple weeks ago as of recording this back in September, September 21st I believe. And there's so many great things going on in this show. This is a Amazing show if you have not watched this yet get on Netflix just find a way to watch this support the official release But you gotta watch this. This is like one of the best shows that I've seen in years just in general now Some of you may know that me and retro Nemo when the trailer dropped for Hilda we did a little uh, What what you call it? We did a reaction video to the trailer we kind of gave our thoughts. Some of my feelings are similar, same, evolved, I don't even know what I'm saying. But what I know is, now that I've watched the whole show, I'm impressed. Beyond impressed. I'm in love with myself for letting myself watch this show. So now that I've watched the show more than once, heard directly from the creators, I want to talk about the thing that everyone is dying to hear about. Colors. I really like the colors in Hilda, for the most part, with the exception of some of the backgrounds like in the world, like the natural world, are a little too monochromatic if you ask me. And if you don't know what I mean by that, let me explain. In the real world, we're really lucky that nature is so beautiful. The fact that the sky is usually blue and the grass is very green, and when you put those two on top of each other, it's a really aesthetically pleasing combination. But in Hilda, the grass is more of like a yellowish brown shade of green, and the sky is like an orangish gray. And I feel like it doesn't really pop the way it could. It gives it kind of a dreary feeling, which is probably intentional because this show is set in a part of the world where things are usually very dreary. If it were me, I would go with more of a greener color for the grass, maybe a bluer color for the sky. Try and use like the same saturation, kind of get the same vibe, but use colors that pop a bit more, have a bit more contrast, or a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Of course, maybe I'm not a professional, I'm not the person who chose the color design for this. Maybe they were looking at a bunch of other shows, they were seeing, oh, a lot of shows do things that way. What if we do something completely different? We want to stand out compared to everyone else and have a world that feels very unique, which it accomplishes that for sure. So I can't really be like, yo, this is objectively bad. I just would have done it differently. And of course, that's just my opinion. And I don't even know how to style my facial hair. I haven't even decided that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's a small thing. And it really doesn't matter because I still love the show. And I still love a lot of the color choices. For example, Hilda herself. I love the color design of her. Just because I love the color combination of cyan and red. In case you couldn't tell. And you don't really see that happen a whole lot. Like, it's weirdly rare that you see that complementary color scheme. And... I just automatically love the main character's design just for that, and I also just really like the main character because she's really charming, she has a sense of adventure, and the fact that her color design is the same as the color design that I usually go with, I just automatically like her. A big part of setting the tone and feeling for a show that you want is music, and that is a big part of Hilda. In fact, the creative director, when she went to pitch this show to Netflix, she brought with her a vinyl full of songs that were similar to the vibe that they were trying to go for with this show, and she played it during her pitch, and that was apparently a big factor in what got Netflix on board with this show to begin with. Music is so important to making you feel a certain way. A melody or a sound can bring out emotions in you, and put you into a different setting entirely. And when you have a world like Hilda's, that is just so different and so incredible and wants to fully immerse you, a big part of accomplishing that immersion is the music. Of course, I gotta be honest, I'm not gonna say that Hilda has the best soundtrack ever, because there are definitely shows I've watched with much better soundtracks who utilize music better, but the music is a big contributing factor to what makes the world of Hilda feel so special. Now it's worth mentioning that Hilda has also been compared to Gravity Falls a lot, and honestly I'm not really a big fan of this comparison, because people are like, oh it's the weird supernatural thing that makes them so similar, but if that's what makes them so similar, Gravity Falls is completely different from Hilda in that Gravity Falls is the same as our world. It's a very normal mundane world, except this one specific place in Oregon has all this weird stuff that happens, and that's where the weirdness comes from. Whereas with Hilda, the entire world is like that. For them, the status quo is having giants and elves and trolls and wasps flying around. All of the weird stuff in Hilda 
isn't weird to them. It's just a part of the vast, incredible world that they've created. And since I'm talking so much about how great the world is, I want to talk specifically about it. What I love most about the story of Hilda is so much of it is just focused on the world. Serialized animation is kind of the wave right now. Every show wants to have a storyline and a narrative that they just want to push in your face and be like, see, we got substance here. And as great as it is to have a story, when every show's hook is that they have a story, it gets kind of stale after a while. But Hilda, even with an overarching plot, is not nearly as narrative-driven as it is world-driven. Every new episode is about exploring a new aspect of the world, a new type of creature, a new basic rule of the universe, and while they do that, they plant seeds and supplement seeds that are planted in previous episodes to build a story around that, which makes the story feel a lot more natural, it makes it feel a lot more realistic, and also makes it so the show prioritizes showing us new things that you aren't going to see in other shows. Like the way that they use the exploration of elves and giants as a way to bring Hilda into the city. And they went from exploring stuff in the wilderness on a pretty surface level that they would come back to later, now they're exploring the difference between the life in the country and the life in the city, and the way different people basically act in the different cultures around those places. And they also use Hilda's drive for exploration as a way to develop her relationship with her new friends, Frida and David. And they use those relationships as a new vehicle to explore different supernatural things about the world, even things about the world that are kind of weird even in context. Now speaking of the characters, there are a lot of really likable characters with interesting but realistic dynamics. One of my favorites being the Woodman, who many have said looks kind of like a Deku scrub from Zelda. And at the panel I went to at New York City Comic Con, Luke Pearson said that a lot of the first drawings he made for Hilda were inspired stylistically by Wind Waker, so it's actually pretty possible that Deku scrubs did inspire the design of Woodman. But regardless, I really like this character. He has a really laid back and humorous vibe to him, and I really like how his relationship to Hilda developed through him being kind of a closed off minor character to being one of the main connections to her home back in the wilderness. Not to mention his golden voice provided by Echo Mitchell. I also really like the relationship between Hilda and her mom because her mom isn't overprotective, but she's still present and she still acts like a mom. Like a lot of cartoons just have parents who let their kids go off in the world and do whatever and they ain't watching their kids when they should be and they're getting in all sorts of trouble and going to different weird places that they shouldn't be going to, and it's like, dog, just watch your kids, for the love of God. But you don't get that feeling in this show, which is a show that you would expect to see that, because there's so much crazy stuff and different types of creatures and mythical stuff going on that you would expect to be like, dog, where are her parents during all of this? But her mom is actually very present and very aware of what's going on and understands her interests and wants to encourage them, but also sometimes she does kind of reel her back and say like, all right, Let's not bring mythical creatures into the house, okay? Also at the New York Comic Con panel, it was mentioned that Hilda's mom, since moving from the wilderness into the city, is a bit more protective of Hilda, despite the fact that in the city there's not as much danger. And it's kind of like an irrational thing that even Hilda's mom doesn't understand herself. But I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's more so the social expectations of living in a city. For example, in the wilderness, there's kind of like a broken window type of ideology, which for those of you who have never heard of what that is, it's basically this idea that if you go into a city and there's a broken window, you're not gonna have a problem with breaking another window. Like, people aren't going to have a problem with just trashing everything. Whereas, like, if you go into a city that's very nice and pristine and things aren't destroyed, you're not gonna go around breaking windows. It's just an ideology that's like meant to explain like social expectation. Like if you're out in the wilderness, you do as people in the wilderness do. You go out and you explore, but if you're in the city, people don't really do that. You just kind of go to do what you're supposed to do. You come home, you might do some stuff here and there, but you're not gonna be messing around with magical creatures. You ain't gonna get into all these shenanigans. So now there's an expectation on Hilda's mom that there wasn't before to keep her kid from going around and messing with all this stuff. Real quick, I just want to run down some of the different creatures that we see. Twig, who is Hilda's dear fox pet, and people really love Twig, probably because it's just, it's a dog. People love dogs. If you make like a pet that's like a dog, then people are automatically gonna like it. Like a dog or a cat, people are gonna love it. You have wafts, which are like wolf clouds. You have giants, you got all sorts of giants. Different types of giants, different races of giants. You have weather spirits, you got thunderbirds, elves, maras, which are like teenage girls who like get into witchcraft to like invade people's nightmares and they're like nightmare spirits. Also, witchcraft is a thing in this show, so that's neat. 
So this show was adapted from graphic novels, and an interesting aspect of this show in contrast to graphic novels is that Hilda's best friends, Frida and David, are kind of background characters in the novels. Like Luke Pearson at the panel I went to kind of described it as like a Venn diagram where there might be some overlap between the stories and as the show goes on that overlap might grow, but they're kind of just like two separate canons. And in the canon of the books, Frida and David aren't really filled as friends, but in the show, one of the head writers, Stephanie Simpson, who is also a really big part of making this show what it is, it's like a collaboration between her and the original author. She wanted to see what Hilda would be like more in conventional social situations, i.e. kind of having regular friends because it's constantly mentioned in the show like oh Hilda you make friends with like giants and trolls and all this it should be no problem for you to just go to school and make friends with other kids but as we all know usually that's not how it works but it's really interesting how becoming friends with Frida and David Hilda kind of challenges their sense of self and by the end of the first season both of those characters really transform a lot. It starts off with basically Frida and David were friends before, and David didn't really stick up for himself. He mostly relied on Frida to figure out what they were gonna do, to kind of guide him through life. And Frida is kind of a control freak, like one of those people who gets all A's in school. Like she's just a total perfectionist. And then once Hilda comes around, David being more of a cowardly character is forced into these situations where he has to have some bravery, face some fears, and be in the belly of the beast to basically learn how to stand up for himself and make his own decisions. And then Frida, by going on adventures with Hilda, kind of realizes, oh crap, I'm not as perfect as I think I am. And that's something that like really gets to her and it causes like a schism between her and Hilda where she goes off with a like a whole different crowd and she has to like reconsider where she finds her value in herself. And during that schism, the fact that David decides to go with Hilda over Frida really goes to show how much he changes from the beginning of the show to that point in the show. Because in the beginning of the show, he would have never done that. He would have been like, ah, oh, geez, I need Frida to tell me how to breathe. But by that point, he had grown to the point where he could make his own decisions. But after some time away from Hilda, Frida starts to realize that maybe she was upset over her own insecurities and they become friends again right before the end of the first season and they've been picked up for a second season so we're gonna see more of this show in the future which is awesome there's still so much of this world that i want to see i still want to see them keep exploring different aspects of what's going on the best part like i said is that all of this happened naturally while they explored what made this world so unique and that kept me as a viewer asking questions and wanting to know more about what's going on in this world that is very out there, but also still grounded enough in reality that I can connect to it. Which is why I'm excited for the season two that they got picked up for, and I'm excited to see what this show does in the future. But for right now, that's all I got to say, so I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Let's Talk with Tom on the Roundtable, but Tom isn't just on the Roundtable. I have my own self-titled personal channel, I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, I have a Snapchat, I have all that good stuff. In fact, I even have a Tumblr. So, if you're interested in any of that, check that out. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>